Hi there, this is Colleen Barnhart of The Quilted Thistle, and I am working on my current coloring quilt project, and I sure appreciate all the compliments that I've been getting as I posted little sneak peeks of this project as it goes along. This started several months ago when I had seen people working with different mediums, be it um, ink tents, Derwent's ink tents pencils, or textile paints, or I've seen just plain acrylic paints used with textile medium um, to add this amazing color to quilts. And I thought, you know, I love coloring and I also love free motion quilting. So how about combining those two passions into something that is bright and cheerful and colorful in the process, which is very meditative. Um, and this is kind of what I've come up with. So I am using, um, on this project, uh, Jacquard's textile paints, which are available in a lot of different colors. Um, they you can use them on natural or synthetic uh, fabrics. I, of course, use 100% quilting cotton um, that is ready to dye, so it doesn't have anything that's going to interfere with the application of color. Um, and I pre-quilt it, uh, free motion, on my long arm quilting machine. You could also free motion on your domestic if you have that talent and those skills. I do not, uh, so I love my long arm. But um, I've been asked a lot of questions about this process and people have said, oh, I don't get the same results when I use the same prod products. And I thought, well, maybe it would be helpful um, if I posted a little video. Um, so the biggest issues that I found is how do you apply the color so that it's not thick and plasticky when it's done um, and rough and keeps that hand of the fabric nice? Um, or uh, also, how do you stop bleed? Um, that really was a challenge at the beginning as I was learning how to, how to work with the paints and the fabric, the batting. Um, on this product, uh, project, I'm using a double bat with uh, wool on the top and then I've backed this in black just in case there's bleed. Um, I've gotten pretty good at not having it but uh, that just you know makes it a little more invisible and I it's kind of difficult to see but I've got a the back batting is a black it's a Hobbs 8020 uh, black batting and so I've got both of those inside of the quilt so that I get a nice loft um, and dimensionality, uh, particularly when I add the colors in the right areas. But in terms of bleed, the biggest um, technique that has worked for me is a very small brush. And I, I kind of I went out and I bought lots of different brushes because I wasn't sure which one was going to be the best way to go. And when I first started doing this, I was using some really expensive, inexpensive brushes because I didn't want to invest a lot of money in something that wasn't going to work well. Um, but I learned pretty quickly that you want a really nice quality brush. And so I picked these up at an at a artist supply store. And um, I just I primarily use two. Here's the other brush that I use. Um, and let's see. That's it. I got this from Flix. Um, and this is the the brush that I use to mix the colors and add a little water to it to make it nice and smooth off the brush. Um, so those are the two brushes that I primarily use. So paints, a paint tray to mix your colors. You can see I've got lots of blues and I'm constantly mixing up more. Um, and I go through a lot of white paint because I do a lot of lightning. and. Um, Let's just talk about how to go. So if you don't have a lot of painting experience, you're gonna to wanna to practice. And you can practice on paper um, because obviously you're not gonna to wanna to spend the time and money to, to quilt something or pay to have something quilted and then uh, practice on um, and have it go wrong. Not everyone has these materials and equipment on hand. So um, I would recommend practicing the basic principles of painting, um, how to load the paint on the brush. Um, you know, you don't want to 
I'm using water, but I don't want water on the metal part of the brush because then the drops will travel down as I'm painting and create bleed. So I wanna, um, after I've added water to the brush or changed colors and, and dried that off, then I'm, I wanna make sure that there's no drips of water before I add my next color. Um, on this one that I'm about to do, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and use this color. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, not getting it on the metal, pick up some of the paint um, and I'm going to thin this down, add a little more water and thin this down because I want it, I don't want it to be gloppy, but I also don't want it to be so watered down like a watercolor that you're going to have uncontrollable paint. So, um, let's see, I'll do this area right here. As I go into this, I just very, very slow application of the paint, per primarily um, or particularly as it uh, lays right next to the line where the color is going to change. I just, I don't want to apply too much at a time. I just want to be nice and slow. And this is kind of where the, just take your time and don't worry about it, comes in. So you can see what I've got going here is going to, I'm just not getting that right up against that line like I want to, so I need to thin it just a little bit, but it's that fine line. Don't want too much water, just want to thin it so that the paint goes where I want it and not where I don't want it. And I always do the outsides and then fill in and that's how I go about that. Now in this blue here I have applied one layer of color and I've, uh, it's been drying as I'm working as I'm working on other parts of the quilt and um, I'm just I want a little more vibrancy it's kind of washed out because I didn't add white or black to this fabric or to the paint which helps those colors um, become more opaque and not as translucent. But I like that in some applications. I mean, these greens, it's all about the translucency to get that kind of effect. Um, so, you know, you just kind of have to experiment and see how it goes. But be willing to go back after it's dried and add another layer of color to any of the areas that just look a little washed out. Sometimes you want that effect, but um, it's not what I'm going for with these swirls. And I haven't used this paint uh, in the last few minutes, so I'm gonna add a little more water to it. And you just keep adding those layers. And it, you know, it could be a slightly different color. I could add a slightly different color of blue over the top of this and completely change the way that looks. And sometimes when I choose a color and I let it dry and I take a look at it and I'm just not quite happy with it, I will go back and kind of alter the color a little bit and paint over it until I'm happy. So on these, I'm just going to keep adding that color over the top and then it'll dry and it, it won't look washed out. It'll look nice and vibrant. And then it, before, once I get it all painted the way I want it, uh, then it needs to be heat set and then it's washable, which is great. Um, I encourage you to try this, to experiment, um, Develop your own doodle style and how, how you want them to look when they're colored. It's so much fun and it is so relaxing for me as long as I don't have a big deadline to meet. And uh, if you don't know how to free motion quilt, don't have the long arm to do that or the skills to do that, I would love to quilt something for you to paint. So get a hold of me. 
um, and we can talk about what kind of project you would like to be able to work with and I would be more than happy to uh, quilt for hire and give you your blank coloring quilt in a variety of sizes so that you can have fun with this too. It's great to do while listening to a podcast or an audiobook or even watching television. You just can't watch too closely. But if it's something that you just want to listen to, maybe glance up, up every, every once in a while, this is a great and relaxing hobby and has just absolutely spectacular results and people are just ooh and all over so um, do it yourself or get a hold of me so that you can do it on your own I'd love to hear from you and I hope you found this helpful have a great day